Hi there and welcome to Laugh So Create. On this channel, I share with you fun and insightful tutorials on how to find your creative side. So are you looking for the perfect project to stretch your bag making skills? I have the perfect tutorial for you today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this tote. I like this tote because when it doesn't use a pattern, so I will be providing you with all the measurements and all the information that you need to make this great tote. So if you're looking to practice some bag making techniques, this is a great project for you to start with. So drop in the comments below what are some of the features that you look for in a tote the height of this bag is approximately finished 14 inches so it is quite deep and the width at the bottom is approximately 12 and a half the width at the top is approximately 15 inches of the box corners four inches deep you'll get to stretch your sewing skills by practicing how to match up all of your seams so it's excellent practice for that. You're gonna get to practice top stitching. You're gonna learn how to make a divided pocket, how to attach straps, how to put in a zipper. Tote is quite deep and it also features another large pocket. And the fun thing about this project is that you can really get creative with how you want the fabrics to be and it's a good structure opens wide so you can put a laptop or an iPad in it and it stands up by itself and it's very roomy. So let's take a look at the supplies that you'll need. Okay so for this project you're gonna need some cotton fabric and you're gonna need two squares cut 17 inches by 17 inches for the lining and two other squares for the outside panels. Now you could choose to make them all the same fabric. I just did some coordinating fabric. And if you wanna add some pockets, which I'm going to do in this case, you're gonna need panels measuring eight inches by 12 inches. You'll also need four pieces of interfacing. And in this case, I'm using the SF-101. But depending on what you want to use, you could use fusible fleece, you could use foam if you have a heavier duty sewing machine. For this project, I'm going to be using SF-101, but I'm also going to use some fusible fleece. Two pieces, 17 by 17 inch square for the exterior panel. Some other things that are useful would be a mat and a rotary cutter, some pins, snips, coordinating fabric and then you'll need a 17 inch long zip now this is zipper by the yard but if you don't have any zipper by the yard just go to the shop and see if you can find something that will accommodate about 17 inches you might have to find a longer zip and then you can use webbing for the straps um, and that is just a uh, that will help you save time and my straps measure 26 inches. But again, you can make it longer if you want it longer or shorter, just depending on your stature. Some scissors, also helpful. And then of course you'll need your ironing board and your sewing machine. So let's get you in closer so that you can see what I'm doing. So for the first step, you can make this tote like one color for the exterior and one for the lining. What I chose to do in another one of the totes was to cut the panel and flip flop the lining and exterior fabrics to add some interest. All you have to do is take your four pieces of fabric, stack them up, just make sure everything's lined up. Measure over five inches. And you're just gonna cut all the way across. Okay, so then you have the ability to mix and match your lining fabric to your exterior. You need to interface all your pieces first before cutting, and then that way everything will be ready to go like so. And what I did in this case 
I uh, actually cut the interfacing, the, the SF-101 smaller. This is after I've pressed the interfacing on and depending on the weight that you want, it will determine what type of interfacing you use. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch down that length at a quarter inch seam allowance using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Back stitch at the beginning end to end. Now you're gonna take it and you're gonna press it. Next, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and top stitch all the way across using a three millimeter stitch length, sewing one eighth of an inch away from the seam on the top part. <laughs> if anybody knows of a good wireless mic let me know because I'm constantly getting tangled up between the chair and the microphone no bueno okay so one panel has been top stitched now I want to repeat for the other lining panel at this point you'll have two main panels that are completed and two lining panels that are also completed now I'm going to work on the inside pocket. Okay, for your interior pocket panel, you'll need two pieces of cotton that measure 8 inches by 12 inches, and you'll place them right sides together. Now I'm going to leave about a 4 inch gap. So next I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, and I'm going to sew all the way around at a quarter inch seam allowance leaving the gap unstitched. I want to make sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. You'll just trim the corners and then you're going to turn it right side out and use something that you can actually get into the corners with without poking the corners out. Press the edges in at the turning gap. Okay, so you can decide where you want the, the pocket, if you would like to have it on the interior or the exterior, it's up to you. So another option would be to make your pocket the same way and top stitch all the way across, which is what I did in this case. And I think I'm gonna use this pocket on this piece it would really look nice. Okay, so for the pocket placement, you're going to place it six inches from the top and about two and three quarter inches in from the side. You just want to make sure it's centered and then pin on the pocket. And you want to make sure that the turning gap is at the bottom so that it'll get caught. Okay, next I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew the pocket on. I'm going to use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length and stitch all the way around the three edges using a or one eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can also put an additional row of stitching down the middle if you want to make it into a divided pocket. Just don't forget to back stitch on both ends because you want to make sure it's reinforced because that's where the most stress goes on a pocket. I actually decided to add another set of pockets for the exterior so I used two more cuts of 8 inches by 12 inches so that made a total of four cuts to start with. Two for the interior pocket and two for the exterior and I actually stitched down the middle and I added an extra detailing stitch down the middle to reinforce it. So now it's a divided pocket. You'll have the rough side up putting it against the wrong side of your fabric. You want to press firmly in place for about 10 seconds, lifting and slightly overlapping the iron to fix the fleece to your piece of fabric. I'm gonna take the piece of fusible fleece and I'm going to go ahead and cut the corners and I'm going to measure two inch by two inch square for the bottom corners. 
and repeat for the other piece of fleece. I'm gonna fuse it on to the exterior panels. Okay, so next you're gonna take one of the lining pieces. This is the top part, the top side of the lining piece, and then one of the exterior panels, and you're going to butt them up against each other with a zipper in the middle. You're going to take the zipper and place it on the lining side and then however you want to affix your zipper choose that method i'm going to use some double-sided tape and lay your zipper flap take your exterior panel flip it so that you'll have right sides together. And the main thing here is making sure that the sides are lined up, that your top piece is matching. Then you're gonna use some clips. When it gets thicker, I prefer to use clips. Okay, and just be mindful of where your zipper head is, obviously. If you cut the zipper a little bit larger, then it makes it easier because you can slide the head off well, not off all the way, but you gotta be careful about that, by the way. Um, but you can slide it out of the way. So this is what it looks like right now. Okay, so at this point, if you need to put on your zipper foot to get closer to the zipper coils, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get started at a quarter inch. Make sure my stitch length is on a 2.5 and start sewing down. Back stitch. Back stitch on the other end as well. Okay, so now that it's stitched, I'm gonna flip it to wrong sides together. I'm gonna take it back to the sewing machine, make sure that everything's pulled away from the zipper. You can use clips to make sure that it doesn't shift. I'm just pulling it away from the zip. This time I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge and I'm going to use a three millimeter stitch length. Well, now that I've done the top stitching, I'm going to take the other exterior panel and going to flip it over so right sides will be facing each other. And I'm going to repeat the steps of the double-sided tape on the end of the zipper. So at this point, you should have the right sides together. Then you're gonna flip it over and you're going to get your other lining piece and you're going to put the lining pieces right sides together as well and you're going to line the top up with the top edge of the zip and again making sure that the sides are lined up okay so i'm going to take it back to the sewing machine and i'm going to stitch down at a quarter inch away from the edge using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length turn it around so you should have the lining pieces that are on the same side and exterior side on the bottom repeat the process of pulling it away from the zipper so i'm going to take it back to the sewing machine and top stitch changing the stitch length to a three millimeter stitch length, one eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, so at this point, it's getting quite large and bulky. And the best way to do this is to roll up the side that you've already top stitched, kind of like a, I don't know, a burrito? I'm <laughs> not sure. Trim all the threads. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and mark one centimeter in or about three eighths of an inch from the fusible fleece. And that's going to be the cutting line. I'm going to repeat that for all of the corners. That way when you come in and you box the corners and use a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, it'll keep the bulk of the fusible fleece out of your corners. Make sure everything's laying flat. You can use the other side as a template. Just line up the edges just right and repeat for the other side as well. All of your sides should be boxed. Next, take, make sure that the lining is out of the way and that you have your two exterior panels lined up and 
then your linings are going to be lined up and at this point you're going to try to press the zipper in towards the lining and you're going to clip making sure that the edges match and the other part that's important is you want to make sure that the outside panels are all matching well and clip and repeat for the lining as well you're going to repeat it for the other side as well at this point i'm going to mark about a five inch mark for a turning gap so i don't forget okay so at this point you're going to stitch all the way down the side at three eighths of an inch seam allowance with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length you're going to sew all the way down and then you're going to leave the corners open and you're going to sew down the exterior panel all the way leave the corner open again and pick up and start down this side going all the way down and repeating leaving the corners unsewn picking up starting here stitch and then back stitch here leave the gap open back stitching here going to the end and leaving this corner open again so the only place where you don't want to sew is at the turning gap just go slowly over the zip you can also go a little bit um, wider the seam allowance on the lining so that it fits tighter might just use the back of the strap a little bit to give it some height on the back of the foot. That way it's back stitch a little bit. So you're just wanting to keep that foot, um, you want it to ride evenly and not uh, off kilter because if it does that then it can skip stitches. I'm gonna make sure that the seams are lined up. Make sure everything's pushed out. You kind of get an arrow shape and I'm gonna butterfly open the seams to reduce the bulk. There are two ways of doing this. You can have the seams kind of going opposite of each other to nest that way. But then you have to make sure that you're repeating the seam going in the right direction on the other side when you're doing the other side or you can just splay it open and then you don't have to think about it <laughs> okay so now i'm going to take it to the sewing machine and i'm going to stitch all of the box corners at three eighths of an inch in from the edge and i'm going to double stitch it so about an eighth of an inch over i'm going to stitch it again to reinforce it so i'm going to repeat for all four corners trimming the excess off the box corners okay so now it's time to turn the bag the right side out through the lining opening Okay, so I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch along this seam at an eighth of an inch in from the edge with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length and I'll go just past where the opening is just to make sure I catch everything and back stitch on either end. Okay, I'm just going to trim off all the threads. Okay, it's time to push the lining in. getting excited okay for the straps i take them and singe the ends these are nylon straps so that should help it stop it from unraveling 
Okay, so for placement purposes, I'm going to do, so you can decide, but about four inches in from the edge and two inches down from the zipper. sewing it you're going to sew through one side so you want to make sure that the bottom is out of the way and then I'm going to sew a box and then cross two lines crossing each other just to reinforce it and repeat for the other side and then double check to make sure that both of the straps are directly across from each other and matching okay it's time to take it to the sewing machine so I have the zipper teeth lined up with a 5 8 of an inch seam. So I'll just remember that so that I keep it consistent on the other straps. Back stitching at the beginning and end. Okay, so I'm going to repeat for all of the straps. So as you can see, the strap stays well out of the way of the zipper. So I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you found it valuable, you might enjoy another tote tutorial. Now this tote might be a little more advanced because it does teach you how to place a recessed zipper panel and it also includes a key fob that is sewn into the bag. So if you are trying to learn that skill, go check out this video, I will link it. So until next time, happy sewing. Okay, so for this project, you're gonna need... You'll need four pieces of fabric, 